it's not yet the end, and it won't be the end for a long time. Um, it instead is stronger pressure for them to find less invasive, more effective DRM technologies. And that's a bad thing, I think, because, um, again, DRM is a solution to a particular problem that itself creates other problems. So think of it like DDT being sprayed to kill a gnat, right? Okay, it kills the gnat, um, but it simultaneously creates lots of problems for the environment or the ecology of creativity that I don't think most people are yet thinking about. And the reason for that is, you know, we've just left the 20th century, which is the age of couch potato culture, right? Where um, basically people consumed culture produced elsewhere. Um, and what we don't recognize is that that was an extraordinary aberration in the history of human culture. Right? For all of human culture before the 20th century, culture was something that people both consumed and created. Right? So there's this wonderful quote by John Philip Sousa in 1906 testifying in, before Congress about the uh, what he called talking machines and how evil talking machines were going to be. And his primary complaint as a copyright holder was that talking machines would stop people from gathering, as he described it, together and singing the songs of the day, right? So this image he had was of culture being produced by people producing and sharing it, not culture consumed by people just listening to talking machines. Uh, and what he's speaking for is the history of culture from zero until the 20th century. Then we hit the 20th century where culture is professionalized, right? So you buy CDs or tapes or 8-track cassettes and you listen to culture produced by others. You might sing it, you know, with your friends, but you don't actually produce it in this particular way. Um, and the 21st century can actually return us in some sense to where we were in the 19th century, where people can actually participate in the creation and sharing of culture. That doesn't mean, you know, Madonna doesn't continue to produce CDs which people buy. But it could mean that culture is something we not just con not only consume, but actually remake and sort of share with our friends. Now that's only possible if the technology allows us to do it. And the real problem to the DRM model that's developing right now is that it will be developed in order to guarantee that you can't pirate content. But as an unintended consequence of that, it will also develop in a way to guarantee that you can't creatively remix that content. Um, so we will be killing piracy, the gnat, but destroying the ecology of creativity that digital technologies invites us to embrace. So I would much prefer that we begin to develop alternative ways to make sure that artists get compensated without locking their content down so it can't be used for these other creative uses. Right. So I like people to think about the difference between a read-only internet and a read-write internet. Right? So the read-only internet is the internet which really efficiently sells you content that you consume. But you can't do anything with that content, you can just consume it. And the read-write internet is an internet that sells you content that you can consume, but you also are free to do lots of things to that content that's creative. Um, and when you begin to think about those two internets, you recognize the second internet will be much more vibrant and wealthy an environment for creativity than the read-only internet. The read-only internet will be a smaller, less vibrant network than the read-write internet. And to the extent our DRM technologies steer us to the smaller market rather than the larger market, then lots of people should be worried about whether DRM is actually a solution to a problem or itself a problem.